So now that we know what functions are, we can learn the function notation, the function language to go along with it. Let me show you a function you're familiar with. So y equals 2x plus 3 is a simple function. It's a linear function. Uh, now we can write it using function notation. This is what it looks like. Okay, that's what it looks like. And it says there is a function of x equal to 2x plus 3, a function of x. Now for short, you can say f of x equals 2x plus 3, f of x. I want to show you another function that you'd be familiar with. Area equals pi r squared. Now that's how you'd write it before function notation, but after function notation, you can say area r equals pi r squared. What this says is area as a function of radius is equal to pi r squared, or a of r equals pi r squared. This is handy because it tells you what the dependent and independent variables are. So even though we don't have y's and x's in our equations, we know that r should go on the x-axis and we know that area should go on the y-axis because area depends on radius. Now there are some other cool things that we can do with function notation. Now a pretty standard thing to do with maths is calculate a value, calculate y when x equals some other thing, right? So this is our equation. This is the same equation in function notation. If we want to say all of this, all we need to say is f of 4. That says put 4 in for x into this equation. So f of 4 is equal to 2 times 4 plus 3, which is equal to 11. This, this little bit here means all of these words. That's what makes function notation so useful. Now, if you wanted to go the other way, calculate x when you know what y is. Here, you can say uh, f of x equals 5. So f of x is like our y value. So f of x equals 5. Solve for x. All right, so if f of x equals 5 and we want to solve that for x, we just sub in 5 for f of x. 5 equals 2x plus 3, and then you solve that. Solve that, uh, x is equal to, uh, it's going to be 4. You can do the solve there. Alright, so it's another way of being able to communicate things using notation rather than a whole bunch of words. Now you can do some great stuff with this. So uh, an example would be, here's a function, f of x equals x squared plus 2x. Determine f of 2t minus 1. So what that says is in our function x, replace x with 2t minus 1. Sub 2t minus 1 in for x. And in this case, you'd have to sub it into two different places. So f of 2t minus 1 is equal to 2t minus 1 squared plus 2 times 2t minus 1. And of course, you can simplify that, expand brackets, do whatever you want to do from here. But there's our basic idea of what it means to be able to use function notation to manipulate functions. So I'm getting dangerously close to talking about the idea of a composite function. If you want to talk about that, come and talk to me about something called a composite function. But I'm going to leave it here. That is the beginnings of function notation.